uh, we're particularly interested in, um, not only in terms of research, but also in terms of counseling pregnant women uh, and women who are breastfeeding, is the whole issue of medications in breastfeeding and what you can and cannot do. Um, and uh, I think this extends, of course, to all kinds of exposures in breastfeeding, not just medications, but I'm gonna focus on this um, as the topic area. So the, the issue is this. Um, it, the, as stated in 2013, the American Academy of Pediatrics says that a common reason for breastfeeding cessation is use of medication by a breastfeeding mom who is advised by her physician to stop nursing if she takes the drug. And this is not an uncommon situation. I'm sure some of you may have experienced that or have friends who have experienced that. Um, we do know that women are confused about uh, issues uh, related to what they can and can't take uh, while breastfeeding. Um, a study that was published in the Journal of Human Lactation last year um, interviewed 248 women, some of whom were still pregnant and some uh, who were, um, had just delivered. And they responded to a number of questions on medication use during breastfeeding. Um, a couple of the uh, summary comments from this survey were that most women believe that natural products were safer than drugs and they prefer to endure pain rather than take medications while breastfeeding for fear that it might be harmful for the baby. Um, in general, women in the sample expressed concern that they did not know how to manage breastfeeding when medications or pharmacotherapy was needed. And uh, this slide is a little busy to look at, but uh, the, one of the things I wanted to pull out of here um, was about halfway down. Um, women responded that health professionals give concordant information on medication use uh, during breastfeeding, uh, only 16% of women responded that the information that they got from health professionals agreed with one another, which obviously creates a dilemma for women who are trying to make decisions about these issues. Um, a second study uh, published last year by our group was part of a, a national uh, influenza vaccination um, outcome study that we were conducting and we interviewed uh, mothers who were being followed during their pregnancies and postpartum um, about uh, their reasons why if they chose not to be vaccinated with influenza vaccine, which is highly recommended, um, what were their reasons for avoiding it? And then in the second sample, we asked them uh, while they were still pregnant, uh, when they um, got into the postpartum period, what would be their attitudes regarding receiving an influenza vaccination while breastfeeding, which would be recommended as well. And a quarter of the women said they would be unlikely to get an influenza vaccination while breastfeeding, not based on evidence. Um, and some of the reasons uh, for those who were not likely to receive the vaccine um, or said they would, would not be likely to while breastfeeding uh, were concerns over safety of the vaccine or unknown risk because there was mercury or thimerosal or other ingredients in the vaccine they were concerned about or that it might harm their baby's physical health, including uh, causing a fever, illness, or you know, some things. Um, in, in addition, and I, we, the, the first survey I uh, mentioned brought this up, um, there is general lack of consensus in what might be considered trusted resources about what a woman may or may not be able to feel comfortable uh, taking while breastfeeding. Um, this is a table out of a study that was published last year in Breastfeeding Medicine. Um, this one focusing on um, antihypertensive medications. And really, the, uh, it, it isn't important what the, the circles mean, but a, a, a light circle or a hash circle or a dark circle represents a, a recommendation or indication that the drug can be taken or cannot be taken during breastfeeding. And what you see here is that when you look at what's in the label for the European Medicines Association and the US FDA uh, versus uh, scientific sources such as uh, Thomas Hale's classification or the LACT-MED classification, that there are uh, substantial disparities between what those sources of what should be uh, trusted information uh, say. So um, in some uh, attempt to move in a positive direction, um, both for pregnancy and lactation. Uh, in June of 2015, um, the new pregnancy and lactation labeling rule went into effect, and some of you may be familiar with this. 
Um, what it does is change the format and what's required to be in product labels now as it relates to pregnancy and lactation. And I'll say a little bit about se new section 8.2, which relates to lactation. So now, um, unlike what is typically in the label now, which is um, either nothing or something about whether or not the drug is known to uh, cross into the milk of rats, um, the, the revised format now uh, requires a risk summary, clinical considerations, and data. Um, so under the risk summary, what are known risks? Under the clinical considerations, um, how to minimize exposure or monitor for adverse reactions, and then finally the data that support the risk summary need to be included in the label. Um, so a big move forward. And just to give you a little more detail, under the risk summary section, um, if the drug is contraindicated during lactation, that information has to come first in the risk summary. It has to say something about the presence of drug in human milk, um, not in rats. Um, effects of the drug on breastfed children, effects of the drug on milk production, and then provide a risk and benefit statement. And then under clinical considerations, if the information is available, how to minimize exposure or monitor for adverse reactions, um, and then the data. So what, where is this data going to come from? Well, actual data on medications in human breast milk is very limited, and especially for new drugs. Um, there uh, typically are no post-marketing commitments or requirements for pharmaceutical companies to do these studies in human, uh, human lactation. So the data is going to have to be generated in order to populate the label, and that's a steep hill to climb. Um, there's one example of a volunteer uh, uh, pharmaceutical company who actually initiated a study to look at one of the biologics, uh, Sertilizumab Pegol, um, and enrolled women in a study to be able to uh, try to look at the amount of the drug that actually gets into breast milk and how much is in um, the, the infant's bloodstream who was breastfed by that mom. Um, but that's sort of an unusual example of some, a study that was been done that was not required. Um, we're attempting to try to address this issue uh, to some extent by establishing a research biorepository for mothers who are breastfeeding. Um, so all across the U.S. and Canada, mothers who are breastfeeding who um, are, are, are not taking a particular medication uh, can uh, uh, enroll in this repository and provide a breast milk sample or cereal samples and we're developing a mechanism whereby we can actually do the assays on those samples to be able to provide some information for uh, women and providers. Um, I'll say a word, one more word in the last couple of minutes here about sources of information uh, for clinical counseling. Um, I mentioned earlier LactMed, and you may be familiar with this, and the app that's associated with it as a trusted resource. Um, which is um, uh, like uh, Hale and others, uh, can provide some summary information of largely um, based on what's known about the pharmacokinetics and pharmacology of the drug and less based on there being actually any human studies uh, done on the drug uh, during lactation. Um, but it doesn't answer all of the questions that a woman might have, and that's one of the reasons why the counseling service that, uh, network that we have across the U.S. and Canada uh, takes about a third of the calls that we receive every year from mothers who are, are breastfeeding, who have questions about, can I take my antidepressant, can I take uh, this, medic this antibiotic? Um, and they get one-on-one -on -one, uh, personalized counseling that kind of helps walk them through what's known and what's not known about the drug, so maybe some of that confusion uh, uh, between uh, what they're hearing from one provider versus another uh, can be addressed. So uh, last, um, and, and I think this, uh, initiative um, that Allison is heading is wonderful to address the fourth trimester. I think that in this arena um, that there are certain uh, gaps that we can try to address. How can healthcare providers be better informed and uniformly informed about pharmacotherapy and breastfeeding choices? How can mothers be better informed about medications and breastfeeding choices and, and wade through um, the, the inconsistencies and misinformation? And then finally, how can more data be generated to provide evidence-based spaces for the safety of medications and breastfeeding to support 